This is Thrivecasters. Thriving, not surviving. Tackling youth issues that matter to you. Welcome to this week's episode of Thrivecaster, where we'll be discussing mental health in lockdown. Your hosts are Hannah Galloway, myself, Ashley Elizabeth Lolo, and Wasila Smedley. Uh, mm-hmm. Our guests today are Leanne O'Keefe, Hello. Leanne Wakefield, and Adante mm-hmm. Dubidat. Uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, so we're just going to go around and if you wouldn't mind introducing yourselves one by one and just a little bit about what you do. So just judging by what I can see in this boxy thing, we're going to start off with Leanne and then we're going to go to Lucy and then we're going to go to Adante. Go for it. Hey, hi everyone. So my name's Leanne and I'm born and bred in the, in the West Midlands. Um, I'm a music therapist and I work in all varieties of schools throughout the Midlands um, and children's hospices as well. And as a result, obviously, of, of lockdown, my, my work has pretty much diminished and I think, and as a result, you know, so many children throughout the, throughout the city are struggling with a lack of support. Um, so this would be a really interesting time to discuss how, you know, we can encourage them to follow different ways of gaining support and encouraging their mental health during this difficult time and actually a lot of the support they should be offering and have um, should be supporting and and have had previously is is not there at the moment so it's encouraging flexibility I think I'm finding it hard to not be able to do my job in the way that previously Mm -hmm. I've been able to do it Mm -hmm. awesome Uh, on to you Lucy Hello, um, I'm Lucy. I'm a writer and an actor and an illustrator. Um, I blog mostly about my mental health and experiences uh, with personality disorder traits and anorexia nervosa. Um, And yeah, I'm I'm hoping to train as a creative therapist after my BA. (laughs) We're in the same boat. (laughs) Is it my turn? Oh, sorry. Um, Adante, I'm a singer-songwriter. Um, that's my creative side. And then um, I'm also a mentor at a alter, uh, alternative provision school, um, which works with children with challenging behaviour, SEN, and behavioural difficulties. So they're some of the most vulnerable ones that would be coping with COVID right now. Um, yeah, and that's a little bit about me so far. Um, it might be worth like me saying as well, um, I did a psychology degree, psychology masters, and then worked as an assistant psychologist for a year. Mm-hmm. Um, and I've just basically been trying to find uh, jobs in mental health. And I've wanted to do similar to you, Lucy, mm-hmm. like blogging. And I also wanted to do like um, a YouTube uh, channel as well with mental health. Um, Ashley, I don't know whether you want to quickly introduce yourself as well. Um, a, I am a writer and radio presenter and youth, youth facilitator as well. So pretty much doing the arts in schools with um, companies like the Rep Theatre, National Theatre. And yeah, just uh, very happy to be here today to hear all your great minds and all the amazing things that you're going to impart on all the young people listening in today. Um, so yeah, today's topic is about mental health in lockdown. Um, so lockdown has been difficult, a, a difficult adjustment to a lot of people, but especially young people. Um, according to Young Minds Coronavirus Report, 32% of young people in need of mental health support agreed that the pandemic had made their mental health much worse. Um, they cited reasons like a loss of routine, social isolation and concerns about their family's health. So we'll be discussing how young people can manage their mental health at home and find further support when needed. So the first question we'd like to start off with is, what are some of the steps that you can take to kind of understand your emotions, especially if you haven't had this much time alone and to kind of be in your own space, it's kind of like you can't avoid your own mind at this point. So what are some of the, yeah, the techniques or tactics that young people can use to try and understand what is going on in their minds right now. Uh, so yeah, I don't know who would like to start. Let's start off with Adante. Yeah. Um, in, you know, from my own experience working with the children, the young people that I do, um, and even with my own daughter, who's now, um, you know, bless she has come through um, a few years of being severely anxious about everything. And um, that was my main um, reason for kind of going down you know wanting to become 
more knowledgeable about what I could do as a parent because even though I was doing what I was doing within schools it wasn't um I didn't feel as though I was able to help my daughter so that's where my concern um you know was raised even more and I think for my daughter and just speaking about how I helped her in a sense it was just being able to allow her to understand that um I was always open if she wanted to talk um the only dis the only problem that I found with that though was a lot of the times when um, young people are living at home with families, there's normally probably possibly one person that they really confide in, um, which would normally have been me. But I think because of her own fears as to how that would impact on me and how it would make me feel, she didn't turn to me to talk. Um, she actually went to her nan. And from there, we started to unravel what was really going on. But I think just being able to have somebody to talk to, whether it's in your direct home or um, just being able to share the, that feeling of, I don't know what this feeling is. That is the beginning of kind of um, actually acknowledging it and identifying that there's something wrong. Um, you know, and when I say wrong, I mean wrong in the sense that it's not your normal personality or your normal behavior. Um, my daughter was very creative, very artistic that wasn't happening she wasn't engaged in any in any of that so kind of taking note of um the normal patterns or your normal behaviors and actually acknowledging when those changes um you know when you notice those changes kind of making a mental note or a physical note somewhere in a journal um however you tend to you know love your um how you feel but taking more note as to how you feel daily and um being able to look back on that you know whether it's weekly or every few days and then just being having somebody to discuss that with or to share how you feel you might not know what it is but you just want to be able to express that i don't feel like myself i think that's such a good point um the one of the first steps to understanding your own emotions is is mm. just talking to someone else about it mm. whether that be um like a friend or a family member or if you have a therapist but i think sometimes when you talk it through with someone else it, it can mm. make a jumbled up feeling become more like it, it become more clear and you can kind of then think okay well i feel this way because um, yeah. Lucy, I don't know whether you have any thoughts about understanding your emotions. Um, just balancing your emotions with logic tends to help. Um, when I was quite poorly last year, when I had a breakdown, I kept a whole journal. And I've been journaling since I was about 17. So it was kind of like a natural thing to do. Um, so the best thing to do, I would say, is balancing your emotions with logic. So why am I feeling like this? And then try and catch your self-judgments as well. Yeah. what what are some of the the like logical things like like is it lifestyle or is it like people yeah. doing everything just like pinpointing it yeah i'd say doing that i mean figuring out why what makes you sad or what's making you anxious and stuff so i'm feeling anxious right now because i'm doing this <laughs> um you know um yeah yeah no that, that's that's really really good point you're using logic thinking oh, okay i've i've done this um so maybe because i did that that's that might be the reason that i'm feeling this way so i think that's a that's a really good point um leanne i don't know whether you had any thoughts about um understanding your own emotions and and how maybe what your experience of this is yeah well i think i think for everyone that one of the most important things to think about at the moment is the fact that it's okay not to be okay yeah you know, we are all in a situation that we never expected to be in. And actually, if you don't feel okay, that's fine. You know, I think, you know, there can be quite a stigma in society that we're not allowed to not be okay. But so many people at present are not okay. And that's okay. Um, as, as people have, have, have said previously, I think it's very important to have your emotions heard. So you can be aware of your emotions, but to have them heard, so to talk to somebody else about them, um is is really really important as you say it could be absolutely anybody a friend and with technology you know this is a prime example today with technology that we have at the moment it makes it a lot easier well i hope it's a lot easier for people to be able to express their emotions by talking about it because you 
can do it by picking up the phone or speaking to someone on Zoom or as people have said, you know, talk to people within your family. But actually, if you're not able to do that, access online resources, look at look at ways that you can speak to other people online um, to keep your, you know, to keep yourself safe and, and to be thinking about how you do feel. But it's important to be aware that actually it's OK not to be OK and you have these negative feelings or emotions you know, you have to be aware of them and 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 figure out ways to, to change them if, if that's what you want to do. Um, and I think it's very important to be aware of your emotions and to have them heard, positive or negative. Yeah, definitely. I think that, like, that's such a good way of, uh, of wording it. Uh, so obviously it's okay not to be okay. And then uh, like expressing your emotions, making them feel heard, um, mm. and also like validating the um, yeah. the feelings as well is really really important um, I, like if I dive in my own experience as well and what I've found is that understanding that emotions are kind of like weather in the sense that like sometimes you feel sad and sometimes there's actually no reason behind why you feel sad sometimes it just comes over you like, and it's just mm. the way sometimes it rains um and it's almost like not latching on to that too much just yeah. allowing yourself to feel that kind of way don't deny it but just also realize that it will pass and that it's not it's not forever so that's something that i've really learned like in in because i've had like different mental health conditions as well and i've learned that sometimes you like you just feel sad and allow yourself to feel sad you don't have to be happy all the time but it and that's where meditation comes in and that if if you use meditation you can almost realize okay i feel really i feel like doom i feel really horrific that feeling isn't you as an entire person that feeling mm-hmm. is just a, a, a momentary thing just like the sun shining or it it raining so i think that's like understanding that it's all temporary and it's like weather and it will pass is, is really good. Um, it's that so the whole situation at the moment is is like that, isn't it? The way you yeah, describe yeah, it yeah. is that actually this will all pass, will change and things will get better, but you have to ride the storm, so to speak. Yeah. 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 It's, it's just that like the, the ever-changing nature of it is just the nature of it. Like things mm. are always changing like your emotions. And yeah. change is hard if you have anxiety, but mm. if you accept that that is the nature of life, that change, that it's all change, then it might make you accept your emotions a little bit better. So that, totally. leads, that leads to the next um, question. So what do you think are the main factors that have contributed to a rise in um, ill mental health um, for lo- young people during lockdown? So what do you think are the main things in lockdown for young people especially that have really like made mental health worse um leanne i don't know if you want to start with your your yeah well i i i think you've already started the the point of that actually change can be really hard for a lot of people um you know some people adapt well to change some people don't adapt well to change this was all very sudden and it's all very uncertain the idea of things being uncertain and not knowing for a lot of people is very hard. And as a result, that can have a real big impact on mental health. So you've got the big change. um, You've got the constant uncertainty, you know, not knowing what's going to happen, when's going to happen. For example, you know, when are you going to return to school? What's school going to look like when you go back? Um, And I think the other big thing for, for teenagers in particular is the lack of being social. You know, you're... You're used to being around people all day, every day. Some people cope better than it than others. But if you're particularly a sociable person, to mm. all of us, you have to spend, you know, potentially six months in the house not seeing anybody else. It's so very difficult for a lot of people. Um, so I would say three things that really impact are the, the, the change, the uncertainty, and the lack of social... The lack of being able to be social. You know, for so many people, it forms part of your identity to be social it's who you are and actually this lockdown and this this period that we're in has stripped so many people children teenagers adults of part of their identity totally definitely yeah sorry just to pick up on that point i literally um i i totally 
believe that it is definitely, um, you know, especially when it comes to young people and teenagers, I think, especially for those that are, you know, moving on to college, um, going into, you know, thinking about going on to university and stuff. I think just that the uncertainty of not being able to, you know, pursue that at the moment. Um, and so, you know, a lot of them, they're coming to that age where they're actually finding and it, they're, most of them are actually starting to like themselves and enjoy who they are. And I think this um, lockdown at the moment has kind of hindered that a little bit, whereas they'd be able to, as Leanne was saying, socialise and, you know, build on those identities. Now they're kind of, you know, being, um, that's kind of been strict and slowed down and, you know, it's preventing them from actually finding out who they really are, you know, in terms of personalities and stuff. Yeah. Definitely. Lucy, I don't know whether you've got any thoughts about it. Um, I mean, to be honest, like regarding with all this, it's it's really weird because it's like worst case scenario pandemic. You know, it's part of, you know, part of anxiety. You're like, oh, what's going to happen and stuff. Um, and then you're like, oh, suddenly a pandemic hits. Oh, damn it. Um, I don't know about anybody else, but a massive factor I'd like to be considered is domestic situations um you know no home is ever different we don't know what goes on behind closed doors um and the pandemic is probably a perfect breeding ground for anything that's going off totally Um, as someone who's come from a domestic sort of situation many many years ago um it's a very frightening situation to be in. Um, So I can't imagine what people are going through during this pandemic. Um, And also, of course, the uncertainty, as Leanne mentioned. Um, I was meant to go to university in September, so I actually changed my mind and decided that I was going to do an open degree um, because I didn't know what was going to happen. There was literally no emails no communications between university or colleges and my sister is currently about to go into her third year and we were just saying like what do we do (laughs) you know um all this about loans and stuff and we don't know what's going off and immediately anxiety is sort of like picking up but yeah it's it's a strange time to be in i think Sorry, I think there's so many of us, you know, not just teenagers, everybody in general, this pandemic has made us lose parts of our identity, so much of who we are. Um, You know, for for me, for example, I love the job that I do, and I wanted to do it since I was 15, since I was a teenager, and I can't do that job through no fault of my own. um, I can't be doing that job, and it feels like that contributes to our you know mental health issues because actually we're not sure who we are at the moment and and is that going to change again adding you know to the uncertainty and you know it's really important to be aware that you know identity is lost in these sort of situations and how else can we look at finding Mm. other aspects of our identity that we can access while we are in this situation that's Um, an excellent point that's an excellent point <laughs> um, you know the last bit sorry to cut you um the part about um you know um having to kind of steer to another skill because like yourself um i feel kind of trapped at the moment um not being able to gig not being able to tour not being able to go to the studio because that was my therapy and i think for a lot of people it is that case where okay these are the skills that i have how can i uh you know, make those skills relevant into something that helps me to find myself still and to keep my identity in some kind of way. And I think, you know, for myself, I mean, I've had I've had many more years than some of you maybe. Um, and I feel as though I've kind of learned to deal with those um, disappoint, disappointments and, you know, the, um, not being able to get what you want, when you want, no matter how hard you try. But I think being able to persevere and to almost update your skills um, mm. or, uh, you know, if you're a creative person, try to tweak them a little bit so that you can still use your skills in some kind of way to benefit, whether it's your community or your, you know, your colleagues or whatever it is, but just trying to tweak those skills 
to make it work for you and so you're not lost yeah what I mean what can you know what can we be doing now that gives us a sense of us what else can you be doing as you say at home to to continue to provide you with a sense of identity and and a sense of purpose Um, Mm -hmm. you talk about the you talk about the music which is interesting obviously it's what I thought I do all day every day um, and I think for teenagers, you know, song is very important. And I'd be interested to hear, you know, what people have done in terms of using song during lockdown, um, listening to songs, being aware of how other people feel through the music and actually creating music themselves. I mean, obviously music is not for everybody, but for example, um, I'm a saxophone player. That's, that's my main instrument. Um, I know, very exciting. Uh, but I haven't really played it for a, properly for many years. Um, and during lockdown, I thought, right, I, I need to do something to bring back part of me. So I've been practicing it for an hour every day. And actually it's a period of time that I may not have been able to utilise you know had lockdown not have occurred so actually it's having this okay I've got this time I didn't want this time I can't do this 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 and this but what can I do with my time Mm -hmm. Um, I think that's been something really important to me is to try and find bits of me that maybe I lost or that I couldn't access for many reasons being too busy or what have you Um, and it's meant a lot to me to to try new things as well as bringing back old things uh, I'm going to hand over to Wasila because I think she's got a question. <laughs> so I always just thought that it was really interesting when you mentioned saxophone. It's like I have a saxophone. I haven't played it in actual years. That's your time! I know. It's like I just I picked it <laughs> up and I sort of started playing Pink Panther again and, oh, and all of these other... <laughs> Yeah, but it's like exactly it's like usually it's like you're making music and things and you had your campaign and everything like ready and then lockdown happens and then it's like okay well I've got all this time to create so I you, know, you just want to keep creating um so from like a like artist to artist perspective because we have so many artists on here it's like have you guys noticed that when you are making things like it's now starting to sound different like as songwriters or it sounds like it there's something like this whole finding your identity and your sound again it's like all of my work is sounding completely different. Like there's something else that's appeared as an artist mm-hmm. where what I'm thinking about what I'm doing and it's just, it, it's just sounding like something that I've never made before. I think I can totally relate to that. Um, I, even for my own writing, I mean, I was always a conscious writer anyway. Um, I always wrote about um, whether, you know, life experiences, love, um, hate, whatever it is, I always try to, you know, bring different perspective into my writing. Um, but like you said, I feel I feel now um, because of certain trends or whatever. I think probably last year I was more focused on because I went through it. I wasn't diagnosed with any mental illness, but I did feel quite low within myself. Um, as I said, I had two years with my daughter that was quite exhausting. Um, but on the back of that, I created an EP called Beats of My Heart, which was a um, uh, it was a bit of what I'd gone through in that period. And when I listen to it back now, that has almost been a breath of fresh air for me to listen to where I was then, <laughs> to hear it now, and to hear it come, you know, to even hear other people's responses in, um, you know, whether it was being performed or played on the radio. And um, just to know that I was able to help somebody in my time of need when I thought everything was dark just by writing something it has actually helped uplift somebody else and I think a lot of what what's coming out now is the pureness of what you're feeling there's no hold you don't need to hold anything back I don't think in this time now it is about being as true to yourself as possible and um because there's loads of people that want to hear it whether you know there's loads of people that actually want to hear the truth about what you feel you know nobody's kind of bothered about the the masks and the you know the <laughs> the persona of what it is to be an artist they want the realness now which is really good because that's what music was about in the beginning yeah I feel the same like there's nothing especially before when you're trying to create things because the like, industry is working and everybody's trying to work and, and we're all working towards this thing and then mm. the thing's suddenly gone so now we just create it is a really good interesting time to start creating I mean particularly for like feelings and things yeah. um because I do a lot of illustration work and stuff. Um, and because I combine media, I kind of like having things that have textures. 
I think the weirdest and nicest thing that you can do is just create as much as possible. Well, I was talking about music, isn't there? I think you made a point there that actually it's just the power of creativity and of the arts in general. You know, we happen to be in a group at present where quite a lot of us are musicians and, you know, that's fantastic. But not everybody's a musician and music's not for everybody. But actually, what can you find, you know, within your current environment that will help you to release some creativity if that's what you want to do? You know, there's there's art, there's drama, there's, there's absolutely all sorts. Yeah. A lot of people, you know, sport is really important to a lot of people. What can you find that is going to help you to be more creative and to feel more like you. Mm -hmm. um, that is such an interesting point. And because you guys are the dream team, you've kind of just like bled into the second question, which is great. It's fantastic. <laughs> um, so the so second question was basically like, how do you cope in these times and what techniques have you basically like manifested in order to kind of cope with this space that we're in? But I think you've definitely hit on it. It's art and it's music and all these different like outlets that you can use to try and express your emotions. And I think in a way we've kind of touched on the word therapy in my opinion, like that's what it is for us. But is there any mm -hmm. other types of therapy that you potentially have used in order to cope with your mental um, health at, at, at different points during this period? Um, and is there any stories or anecdotes that you can think of where you've heard of people that have seek mental health and um, mental health advice in this period and it's actually helped them through it as well? Um, over to you. I think if, like, I, I, I can start with a few things, definitely. Um, I've, I've never meditated as much as I have during lockdown. Like I always wanted to, but I now find if I go two, three days without meditating, just using like a, a 10, 15 minute quick one on like a guided one on YouTube, that is such a help because I've found that that it breaks the loop of overthinking that you might be do might be in a habit of doing for a really long period of time. So um, using meditation for me um, is, is, it helps more than maybe anything just because it makes me realise how in my thoughts I am. Um, so that's, that's a really big one. And then also just, I'm sure this is one for everyone, it's just moving around. So like just making sure I'm not in the same space. It's not necessarily doing absolute loads of really intense exercise, but just going for a walk or clean the house to just move in your body because yeah. like I've found for me that if I if I sit in the same place all day by the end of the day I always feel absolutely terrible <laughs> because I'm I've got all this energy built up um so I think those two for me and then also um I've found um a therapist that I've been able to see um on Skype I do have to pay for it so it's not cheap but there are some cheaper um options available and um, but that's been a massive massive help i didn't realize i haven't had therapy for a really long time and i didn't realize how much it immensely helps talking through things and because a lot of the time people and what i did was just really hold my emotions down or just think oh no be happy just get on with it or like man up and all of that but the emotions that I found that I was just dulling down, um, they're always there and they will always be there. Um, but actually dissecting them and think and, and healing yourself, um, mm. I found really helpful. I don't know about anyone else. For myself, um, I'd say again, um, like you said, Hannah, um, kind of just making sure that you, you know, like for myself personally, I know that if I wake up and I'm just in my pajamas all day, that isn't going to help me. I might get away with it one day, but I can't do that consistently. Um, it does kind of, it, it, it's, it's heavy. It, that's a heavy um, routine to kind of keep up with, um, which a lot of my young people, when I call, they are asleep. Um, and I've been trying my hardest to get, even if it is a case of just getting up and jumping in the shower and putting on a fresh set of clothes, it makes a big difference. It just makes you have to kind of, even if it's only for a couple of hours, it makes you have to wake up and do something, even if it is just to move to the front room or, you know, to go into the kitchen to make something to eat. But it just gives you that little bit, of bur a little burst of energy to, you know, be productive and also to read a book. Um, you know, there's so many 
books out there you know you've got um audio kindle you know you just find something that really grabs you and um get lost in it you know because it dis just distracts you for a while meditation is something that i've always done all my life um i recently did a hypnotherapy course for a year and that was fantastic i didn't even know it was that useful and again using meditation and relaxation techniques um just within the home putting on a bit of music chill music instrumental listen you know chill back but literally getting up and moving around the house going outside um you know cutting a, a few trees down planting something it does help to just distract and break up your day alongside that sorry is the the importance of having some sort of routine yeah um so yeah. as you say you know you want to stop yeah. in your pajamas all day actually how is how is that going to benefit you? And I, I think, you know, it's important to try and wake up every day and to give yourself some form of routine. Again, you know, we are in a situation where we don't really have any control over what's going to happen at present. But actually, if we can gain some control within ourselves, so to have some routine, wake up, you know, are you going to wake up at the same time every day? Don't stop in bed till midday. Set your alarm for, I don't know, eight o'clock or nine o'clock and, and go for a walk. If, you know, if exercise is your thing, um, and for me, I, you know, I do a lot of walking. I've got a dog. I do a lot of running. And, and that's been really helpful. But I do try and wake up every day and have a vague routine yeah. or structure to my day because that helps me to feel in power and, you know, to feel a bit empowered and to feel in control and to have some structure to your day can be, can be really helpful, you know, or wake up and think, right, what do I want out of my day today? What what am I going to achieve with my day? You know, you don't have to have a, right, I'm going to do this for 20 minutes and that for 20 minutes, but actually to have some sort of goal for your day might be important, something to strive to. Even the tiniest thing, right, I'm going to get up and I'm going to walk a mile today. But mm. for a lot of people, that's, that's really useful and it's providing us with a sense of purpose and a sense of achievement that actually we've lost to a point within society at present, but you can, you know, you can do it yourself. You can change these things yourself. You can change the way you feel partly by your behaviors. I think. I agree. <clears throat> I mean, it's like, we kind of focus on the system. We really do focus on having structure. Um, just, just to say, I, I used to be home ed, so I've kind of always lived by a flexible routine. Um, and I think that's something that people should adjust to doing like um, every night I kind of make myself like a little to-do list on my phone so I'll do like um, tick boxes and things so even if it's something like oh brush my teeth in the morning at least I'll remember to do that because I don't know about anybody else when I'm feeling quite low I'll forget everything <laughs> yeah. um, but I've set myself a target every day which is basically make a piece of art um, and then if I can't do that, I'll know to do something else. But I think it's really important that you keep flexible during these times. Finding that balance between structure and routine and flexibility, isn't it? And everybody's different yeah. in terms of how much of each they would need. Mm -hmm. um, but again, it's, you know, it's very important to think that we are all very different people. We are all individual people. We cope with things differently. We feel things differently. And as a result, we need to adapt to our situations differently you know I know some people who have absolutely no structure in their day whatsoever and that's what they want but then others you know as you say write a daily to-do list and and that's what they want it's important to be aware of as we said earlier your emotions but also to be aware of what works for you mm. I mean it doesn't need to be like what 20 points or something on this to-do list <laughs> you know <laughs> it could just be three things to do you know just give yourself a goal like you said Leanne that it does help and it gives you a sense of purpose and things like that. I think that one of the biggest things that everybody has kind of agreed on here is is that just having some kind of purpose for the day is one of mm. the biggest helps um, for your mental health because and also I loved the thing about separating like the day and the night and like at night you're asleep you're in like you're in your in or whatever. and then <laughs> and in the daytime like, I think that is a massive one just getting changed or moving mm -hmm. to a different room because then when you're in a different room that might then if you're feeling really low or you're feeling really like 
horrific getting out of bed's hard enough as it is then yeah. if you're out of bed that might then make you think about doing another thing even if it's really small so mm. it, obviously it depends with mental health some people um, going through really bad patches of mental health might have had really severe patches where they can't leave bed um mm. but then again it can be just about starting small um so i know when i felt really low at one point during lockdown i would um i just made a, uh, a list um of things so like wash um move and eat three things now and and i and I'd know as long as I did those three or two or whatever, that that would change my mood and that I'd celebrate the fact that I'd just done that. Um, mm. So just, I, I think it's just tailoring what works for, works for you. But um, moving on from that, um, what, do any of you know any specific like services that are available, like especially online at the moment? Are any of you got any different things? Um, that you can just add in that might be useful um, during lockdown and just stuff online? Um, I have two, actually. Yeah. <laughs> um, I've been using um, MQ for mental health surveys. Um, a lot of the time, universities are going to benefit off experience during COVID, and I particularly recommend doing those sort of mental health surveys. Um, and often it benefits you as well. Um, and that's given me a purpose in the day because I know I want to, you know, I want to do a survey first thing in the day. Um, also, I don't know if anybody knows about it. It's called Frazzled Cafe and it's run by Ruby Wax. And she does like daily sort of therapy sessions and stuff. And you can just drop in and it's free. Um, and I think it's like a talk and chat line sort of thing. But it's it's really good. I mean, from a lot of the kids that I work with kind of thing, I mean, a lot of them are coming from bereavement and stuff. So mm. they sent Edwards um, Trust, which was fantastic. I believe that they're really useful. They'll give you pointers. Um, I mean, in terms of free online services, I would definitely check with like NHS first and then see what's available. You know, I mean, like go through their list and then they'll can kind of direct you elsewhere as well. Because um, I think sometimes, especially if you've never had any therapy or any kind of counselling before, I think some people um, have different expectation as to what they're actually going to get from that. So I think sometimes just, um, you know, talking or looking on the NHS line first where, you know, it's a repli replicable um, source and then you can have that confidence to kind of um, look on their directories as well. Because some of them, they will offer a lot of free counselling to begin with. Um, although you may have to pay after. I mean, there is another great service, um, and I must admit, you know, as experienced, because I've done about six counselling services, and those are pretty much through the NHS. Um, I just want to mention that you can end up being on a very long waiting list, and I would recommend like looking around at all the services that are private and through youth services, LGBTQ services as well. Um, and also charities which do operate on a free service you know um nhs is great and stuff and like should be considered as first port of call and stuff but from experience i've been on waiting lists of like 18 months and i've reached the lowest point and then end up in crisis and i would really recommend if you're in a position to oh. have a look at charities um aside from that so like papyrus the hopeline uk which is open every day uh, beat and young minds and mind yeah and also let's talk about loss which is a young people's charity for grief and yeah. they really helped last year so there are some amazing charities that operate free therapies yeah there, there's some really really good examples i must admit i i don't have I don't have um, much more to add, but what I think I would suggest to people is, you know, as, as fantastic as the internet is, it really is amazing. Sometimes mm -hmm. you can Google things and you might regret it. Um, mm -hmm. You know, Google to... Google can be fantastic, but, oh, you know, good old but what are you Google. going to find? So <laughs> if, if you were, I think if you're looking for more, I want to say mature advice, I think it's important to be aware that actually, your educational establishments, wherever you are as teenagers, your secondary schools, your colleges are actually still open to some extent. And if you, you know, 
know, if you need support from welfare team at school, they are still there. They might not be there in the capacity that you expected them to be. You know, they're not in school every single day, but they are still working and they should be working. So mm -hmm. if you want to be signposted to somewhere and know that where you are signposted to will be helpful to you, get advice from people that you feel comfortable getting advice from. Ask and those who you most trust. Ask your teachers at school, ask the welfare team at school, pastoral managers, etc., etc. You know, they will be very experienced in this kind of field and knowing where to signpost people to, particularly now. So I think it's important to be aware that although you are not in your education establishments at present, they are still present in some form and if you need help, it's important to ask them as well. Mm. I think that is very, very important. And I think it's just triggered off a different question in my mind actually like if you are a young person and you are at home and you've got a family member who is in need of mental health support or you've got a friend who is in need of mental health support how would you advise that person to help their friend or help their family member and obviously bearing in mind that they are young people and like how yeah how best would you advise them to help others without also exhausting themselves as well be there for that person yeah the best thing i can suggest is be there physically for that person and you know do things together go on walks together um by encouraging that trust that you can talk to them i hope they can talk to you um i'm currently um shielding two people with who are high risk and then another one next door um who also is high risk and i'm seeing them struggling mentally so we've kind of ended up having to form a bond sort of thing in order to talk to each other. And I know, I know that it can be quite hard and stuff, but just be physically there for that person. Yeah. You know, it's better than hearing those uh, cheer up comments, which really just don't help. <laughs> I think it's also important to know that we don't always have the answers, do we? You know, yeah. What one person needs and what another person needs is two very different things. But if you're going to be able to help somebody else, you need to be aware of yourself in the first place. You know, the extent to your limits, how far can can you cope with physically, emotionally, mentally being there for somebody else? Mm. And that, that that might then have on you. Um, I think it's important, although it's, it's so hard for people to know your limits, but also to be able to ask for help when you need it. So, for example, so, you know, someone gave an example of having a family member that's potentially struggling and not knowing what to do about it. It's okay, much like it's okay to not be okay. It's okay to not know. We don't know everything. We don't have the answer to everything. So, if you don't know, find somebody that will be able to help you to do so. And they, they say, don't they, a problem shared is a problem halved, you know. Mm. As we said earlier, who can you speak to? How, who, who can you help? Who can access who can help you to access different services because a lot of this we can't be doing on our own and we shouldn't need to be doing it on our own the services are there and it can be really daunting to ask for help but in order to help yourself and to help others in the long run I think that's really important to be mindful of that we can't always handle things on our own very true I think um as you both said um you know with a lot of my friends and like with yourselves working with people that are creative and you know they're doing arts or you know music and so forth I think we do have a tendency to have um you know these low patches where we feel um depressed a bit stressed and worried about things um but I think just being a friend full stop um you know a good friend you'd never let that per you know you don't let you don't let them go do you um I've got you know I can count five friends on my hands and we've grown up together and believe me um anything that I learn you know like through my own studies and stuff through conversations and talking I share that with them um and just generally just be the best friend that I can be um if it means they need to come not so much in this time now but you know I've had friends come and crash down here for a couple of nights um you know just because I didn't want to be alone and if it meant we sit up and watch films or whatever you know no conversation but just being around somebody that you know generally cares for you um it makes a big difference and not feeling like they're a burden on you um that 
helps the other, you know, the one that's actually going through the trauma and the stress um, just to not feel as though they're a burden. So, you know, I'll say to friends, call me at any time. It could be two o'clock in the morning. I don't care as much as I might. I will tell you I'm sleeping, but believe me, I'd rather you talk to me and rant than to hold it in until in the morning. And then God forbid, I may not see you tomorrow. So I always, um, you know, I don't care what time it is. If you feel you want to rant, if you want to talk, talk to me at any time. And I think that's what a good friend does. And just as um, Leanne said before, just being able to know that you do have a boundary and there's a limit. And there's certain things that we are not going to be able to help each other with. But pointing them out, just making them actually acknowledge that, you know, you can get help from other services and so forth. And just probably even attending those services or making that call with them. Just being a good friend. Yeah, I think you just, you have to be your present, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. To be present for somebody. I think that's the running vibe that's gone through. You are present in whatever form. That is helpful for people to know they're not alone and there are others that are present and with them in some capacity is, is massive within itself. Yeah. yeah I think and the really absolute be... worst. Oh, sorry. Go on. <laughs> um, the absolute worst thing you can do during all this time is actually bottling up your emotions. Mm-hmm. Look, what you've said about being uh, present is is really really important. Not necessarily always being able to solve, or you might not always be able to help them. But if you're present and and show that they're not a burden, then that's that's always really helpful. So, um, the last question: um, if any of you guys um, have ever yourselves or seen anyone else, if they feel like they're they're beginning to slip. Um, into like depression, anxiety, or a- any other addiction, wh- whatever, any mental health condition. I know it's going to be different for anyone, but when you just you first feel it coming on, um, is there anything that you guys would recommend, like tips, techniques, um, when you notice that that you're starting to slip into something? Yeah, for myself, um, I think. Uh, you know, as I said, it happens. I go through little waves um, and I can know when I'm actually going to end up feeling, you know, I mean, I don't want anybody around. I'll start to try and I'll possibly start avoiding phone calls and messages. Um, and I'll, I'll notice that kind of creeping up for a day. But by the next day, I know that I've got to respond. Um, my friends, they know my <laughs> my patterns. And if I haven't responded to them in a couple of days, they're going to call um and they're going to almost kind of shame me up they're going to keep ringing they're going to keep sending me texts and whatsapps until i do respond and um you know even when i do end up speaking to them we end up laughing about it because it's like you were gonna (laughs) they kind of know when i'm gonna i'm sort of trying to create that bubble for myself um and it's not even a it's not a bad thing all the time because sometimes we need that just to you know be still and focus on what you really want for yourself but I think also that, um, you know, just being able to know yourself and just as, you know, as I said, switch the mood, switch the room, um, come out of the house. I've been in the house for two days. I know that I don't want to be in the house on the third day. Uh, so I find something to do, whether that's going to go and get a central shopping or even just to walk through the park. But it's, um, you know, you're at, in, as Leanne was saying before, it's okay to not be okay you know, the first day, second day, I kind of, you know, I feel like that's my time to just feel that feeling and I don't feel any regret for it. But then I don't want it to continue on for any longer than that. I will try and switch that mood. And I mean, literally switch the mood, you know, like you go into drama and you've got to switch into another character. I think um, somebody told me to use that technique um, when I was at school and it really does help. Um, and I'm not talking about severe cases of depression or anything like or mental health like that. But I think when you are when it's mild, you can almost put on another persona to kind of just help you to, you know, just help drive you through that first little bit so that you can become yourself again. If that kind of makes any sense. <laughs> Has anyone else got um, any thoughts about like when slipping in like techniques to? Um, if you feel like yourself slipping into any mental health condition? Um, I would really suggest having some form of a crisis plan. I know, oh boy, um, 
I just want to mention that there's a lack of services and I think that there should be more access and better access to crisis plans and things which I think would help if you are slipping um, because you know I had to wait I think it was like 12 months in order to get a piece of paper to say what to do when I was sad or when I was starting to slip um, and I think the best thing you can do is acknowledge you're struggling and having some sort of protocol of what to do and sort of thing um, so like I'm feeling sad I need to call a friend um, having the Samaritans phone line or something you know yeah. something simple but I think having your own crisis plan and having it with family members you know becomes really important especially after Covid you know there are a lot of people that are probably struggling through this Absolutely. I, I can completely agree. Um, I think having some sort of plan is, is really useful and actually making other people aware of your plan is just as important. Um, you know, if, if you don't make other people aware of it, then you're, you're, you know, you're, you're dealing with it on your own. I think it's also important to, to talk in general, talk to people about potential triggers that you may have um, for, for your mental health or potential behaviours that they might want to watch for. As Adante, as, as Adante said, um, she hadn't spoken to anyone for two or three days. You know, is that a trigger for you when usually you speak to people on a daily basis? Who can you make aware of these things that people could be aware of? That The simplest little things um, it can help, but I think overall it is important, as difficult as it is, to speak to other people about it you know to make those people that you love and that you trust aware that you know these these things do happen and, and that in times of crisis you would like help and this is how you'd like help this is what you want people to be aware of it's it's really difficult and really daunting to talk to people about it but in the long run you know it's the best way it to help, can help. absolutely yeah it's yeah. it's the hardest step <laughs> it is I think um, an another thing as well, so like knowing your triggers is, is massive. So one of my triggers is when I don't have a balance, like if I try to do too much and then I neglect self-care, like eating properly or exercising or doing all that. Like I, I, one of my triggers is that if I do too much and overwhelm myself with things that I need to get done yeah. and I don't have any fun and I don't see friends and I just try and do loads of work all the time or just be productive all the time that is a trigger so but but having like quality time with friends and remembering to do stuff that you enjoy and do stuff that makes you lose track of time and and just mm -hmm. be effort like find something that makes you effortless effortlessly like happy or mm -hmm. blah 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 like I think that that is Balance is a massive, massive thing that's so hard to master, especially if you've got like mental health problems. But I think, yeah, that's definitely a, a really good one. Yeah, I think that's a good point to wrap up on. Um, it's been amazing having you all on. Like you've all added so, so much. Um, oh, Ashley, I don't know you want to say. No, uh, thank you for everyone coming on today. Uh, so we had Leanne O'Keefe, we had Lucy Wakefield, and we had Adante Dividat. Uh, thank you for all listening in. Uh, join us next time for conversations that matter to you. So thank you guys. Bye. 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 Thank you, everybody. Don't forget to follow us on social media on Point WM and hashtag Thrivecasters. Join us next time for more conversations that matter to you.